Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth. I am a 37 year old attorney living in the DC area with my husband. And for today's video, I am going to be embracing my inner coastal grandma and sampling four different scents from the niche independent fragrance house called Blue Hill Fragrances. Uh, so just to give you a little bit of background, uh, Blue Hill Fragrances, um, I think it's a Massachusetts based uh, fragrance house. So they are inspired by the Blue Hills Reservation just outside of Boston. Uh, which includes over 7,000 acres traversing forests, marshes, swamps, ponds, flowering meadows, and a fragrant Atlantic white cedar bog. The top of the Great Blue Hill offers panoramic views of Boston skyline and harbors, inviting thoughts to wander to the earlier historic times that formed the New England we cherish today. The area's rich heritage and vibrant environments, combined with a deep appreciation for quality materials, are at the creative heart of Blue Hill fragrances. So if we need to establish the precise coastal location of this grandmother, I guess she would be at Martha's Vineyard instead of the Hamptons. Uh, so anyway, so I have their uh, sampler set to try out. Uh, so just a quick word on uh, shipping and prices and everything. Um, this set of four samples was $30, but I think they have sales pretty frequently. So if you are interested in this perfume house, uh, maybe just follow their Instagram and see when they might be having a sale. Um, so it came in a bubble mailer, nice little handwritten card here from Sandy Carr, the founder and perfumer. I like their little illustrations and artwork they have. And then these are the fragrances. So they came in these little packets. I think there's two in each one. Okay, so I'll let you know the four scents that I do have and then some of their scents that are not included. Uh, so I have here Beach Rose, and I will give you all the notes and everything in a minute. Uh, Midnight Ride, and I do want to mention that um, I first found out about this perfume house through Lauren May Beauty. I guess she had tried, I think, Midnight Ride, so that's kind of where I first discovered them. Zest which is a citrus scent. And then finally we have Ivy League. So the ones that I don't have are Sea Breeze, which definitely sounds like it could be a coastal grandmother scent. Uh, there's also Back Bay and Metro Garden. So I think each of these is supposed to be two milliliters. And they say that you'll be able to order a full size bottle with the code MYFIRSTBOTTLE. I don't know if you need to have a prior purchase on your account to be able to use that, but the code MYFIRSTBOTTLE will get you 20% off a full bottle. So the pricing varies a little bit, but basically an eight milliliter roller ball will cost 30, a 30 mil or one ounce bottle is about 60, and a 50 mil or 1.7 ounce is 95. So I wouldn't say those are drugstore prices, but they are definitely not unreasonable compared to some fragrances. And like I said, they do have sales pretty frequently. So because my favorite part about fragrances is usually the description, I'll read the descriptions for each of these fragrances and of course spray them. I have my little uh, cards here ready to go. And then I'll let you know which ones are my favorite at the end. Okay, so the first fragrance um, that I don't have is called Sea Breeze. Uh, it says, stand on the rocky New England coast and breathe in deeply. The crisp ocean air envelops you, cool and calming. The sea breeze rustles through tall grasses, creating an exhilarating green freshness and an impromptu dance of wildflowers along the shoreline. A heady bouquet of white flowers is warmed by the sun at the heart. Weathered branches of driftwood wash ashore to be found by energetic rock walkers as the aromatic salt-infused accord blends beautifully in an intoxicating finish of ambergris, sandalwood, and rich sweet musk. All right, so that one is Sea Breeze. There's also Back Bay. Uh, so this one, it says, an early morning walk through this majestic neighborhood with the first rays of sunlight glimmering through the streets reveals a dynamic history and a miracle of preservation. Gliding past elegant Victorian brownstones and burnished brick Edwardians, the perfume of private gardens mingles a flourish of rose, iris, magnolia, hyacinth, geranium, and muguet with the tantalizing green freshness of grass and leaves. An opening burst of bright bergamot envelops the heady floral tapestry, setting the stage for a luminous heart of sweet basil, galbanum, and a nuance of ocean air, while ambergris and rare earth are grounding to an addictive base of sandalwood, cedar, and crystallized amber. 
So that was Back Bay. And the last one here is Metro Garden. So it says, a flowering awakening in the heart of a great metropolis, a garden of dreams lovingly tended by its citizens is preserved as a living oasis. Framed by cast iron fences, sun burnished brick pathways and lyrical fountains, an ever changing canvas of aromatic explosion offers refuge from urban restlessness. Vibrant top notes of lemon pedigree and gilded bergamot give way to an emotional heart of moody iris, vintage violet, heady rose, and velvet narcissus, while precious sandalwood, Peru balsam, smoky vetiver, and crystalline musk provide a warm, sensual finish. Okay, so that was it for the ones that I don't have. Um, so I guess I'll start with Midnight Ride, since that's the one that kind of first piqued my interest. Um, as I've said in other videos, I am a great lover of uh, American history, specifically like colonial early American history. Uh, so this was definitely intriguing to me. So this is supposed to be inspired by the Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. So it says, a momentous journey on a dark April night in 1775, guided by a fiery burst of adrenaline and pale gold moon glow, piercing the fog over the bay. Aromatic moist earth rises with the rhythmic stamp of speeding hooves, while the air is filled with herbaceous swaying fields and the greenness of newly budding leaves. Entering the woods, the exhilarating freshness of pine, fir balsam, and cypress mingle with nutmeg for an energizing effect at the heart. As the first cool morning breezes begin to rustle, a resinous blend of sandalwood, cedar, blackwood, precious musks, and smoky amber bring a warm, sensual finish to the dry down. Okay, so this one sounds like it might be a little bit more masculine. So I'm curious whether my husband will like this. So this has the little spray here. Just sprayed my hand. This reminds me of something, but I'm not quite sure what it is, which I know is really helpful for you guys. I think that cedar is definitely coming through. I think I do get a bit of a smoky type scent to it. See, this one's really balanced. For me, I think I would prefer this more on my husband than wearing it myself. I think as a men's fragrance, uh, and I just use those words in the traditional sense, like you can wear whatever you want, obviously. But I think it's nice because you do get some of that cedar depth, but it's a little bit maybe lighter than if they went in like full throttle on a masculine fragrance with these notes. Okay, I like that one. All right, so that was Midnight Ride. Uh, the next one we have is Ivy League. So it says glossy green leaves with pale yellow vines climb gracefully over burnished brick walls, protecting the history within. A dense, laden carpet welcomes the footsteps of those privileged to enter these hallowed halls to secure their place in the universe. Inhale the exhilarating freshness of the celebrated ivy as it mingles with bright green mandarin and tangy black pepper, forming an aromatic pastiche at the heart of fresh cut grass, narcissus, basil, rosemary, mint, and sweet green pea. A field of tart cassis and resinous balsam bring a warm, elegant finish to the dry down. So very interesting combination here. Let's see what this one is like. Yeah, this is, this is a very green fragrance which is kind of what you expect. I, I think I'm getting a lot of the citrus and the basil in a grass note. This is almost like a really kind of summery cocktail. Like I can almost like taste that kind of tanginess on the, on the tip of my tongue. But yeah, that grass really comes through. This is, uh, I was just remembering um, that scene in Harry Potter when um, Hermione says what the love potion smells like to her. I think she said like sunshine, freshly mown grass, spearmint toothpaste. For example, I smell freshly mown grass and new parchment and spearmint toothpaste. So I think the notes in combination with the fact that this is like Ivy League, you know, kind of a academic type environment. If I had to like identify a fragrance for Hermione, I think I would say this one. Yeah, I think this, I think I would most enjoy Maybe as a candle, like an outdoor candle especially. I think that grassy note is a little strong for me to really kind of love it, but I think it could be like a really nice kind of refreshing 
um, scent. Like you think of those like huge, like indoor outdoor dip tea candles. Like I can imagine um, that scent being really nice to put out like on a patio or porch or whatever in the summer, um, especially when it's a bit hot out. Okay, so that was Ivy League. The next one is Zest. Mm, I don't know if I like this one. So it says, summer in New England, a few euphoric months to celebrate the warmth and the sun. Breathe deeply and inhale a revitalizing opening of bright, zesty citrus, a joyous cocktail of lime essence, sweet orange, fresh cut lemon, Italian bergamot, and lavender. So they kind of threw all the citruses in this one with some lavender. A graceful heart of Lang Lang Mimosa Olescence and Neroli floats on a veil of white musk while tangy grapefruit and enlivening cedrot heart refresh at the finish like a ray of liquid sunshine. So this one to me is kind of a mix between like a lemon candy and a cleaning product. It almost has like a bit of like a fizziness to it, like a lemon soda maybe. But I think, yeah, there might be some kind of cleaning product notes around the edges. Okay, so far I think that one might be my least favorite. Uh, and then next up and last, we have Beach Rose, which sounds like of all the ones we have, this one it may be the most like coastal grandmother. So it says, dancing along the eastern coast, the heady aroma of this imperious, wildly blooming member of the Rose Dynasty instantly transports one to a warm, sunny day at the beach. A perfect dreamscape infused with salt spray, swaying seagrass, lyrically shifting dunes and foamy shores, some sensory memories of joyful and relaxed times indelibly etched in our hearts and minds. A bright opening of sparkling bergamot, tangy grapefruit, and graceful orange blossom leads to a dramatic heart of lush red rose, new mown hay, heart tomato leaf, and ethereal ozonic accord. At the dry down, ambergris, beeswax, and creamy sandalwood meld beautifully to a field of Peru balsam, golden honey, and crisp ocean breezes. So I'm very excited about this one. I have a whole video dedicated to my favorite rose fragrances, if you'd like to check that one out. Um, but I do love a good rose and citrus combination, and the tomato note there is very interesting to me as well because my husband loves um, tomato smells. So I actually purchased this set before I was kind of thinking of um, couching it in coastal grandmother terms. Uh, but as I've been kind of thinking about this video, it did occur to me that, you know, in, in most perfume reviews, I, I would say up until the summer, I guess, um, calling something a grandmother fragrance isn't necessarily a compliment. Um, you know, you think of something that's kind of old fashioned or just, you know, not very modern. So that thought was definitely in the back of my mind as I was thinking about this video. And I, I think this one really kind of nails the coastal grandmother um, scent on the head with the the beach and the the rose. I'd say it's it's a little bit of a heavier rose. So I guess beach rose is actually like a specific varietal of roses, which I don't know that I've ever encountered in any other sense. Yeah, I think I get a little bit of the beeswax and like a really kind of heavy rose. There's just like a tiny bit, I think, of the citrus and the orange blossom. So yeah, so I think honey, which is not always my favorite note, is really coming through to me. Maybe a tad bit of that kind of sharpness is like the ocean breeze note. And I guess the sandalwood as well is what I pick up on. Yeah, so that is really interesting. But I think, you know, this really nails Coastal Grandmother because of the floral notes, the idea of being in a garden with tomatoes, ocean breeze, so yeah. I'm very comfortable in that assessment. Okay, so let's rank these, as I mentioned. I think I'll go from least favorite to favorite. So um, I think I'm gonna put zest at the bottom. I mean, it's softened a little bit. It's not giving me the kind of um, like cleaning fluid vibes that I was getting at first, but it's a very kind of soft citrus. Maybe the neroli, like more of the floral is coming through. I think now it's kind of leaning more into the, the lemon candy type side of things. So I was probably picking up on just like the pure alcohol from the initial spray before it was like fully evaporated to get that cleaning fluid. 
I'm just thinking like a lemon Pez is kind of what I'm thinking of right now. So if you want like a really sweet, light citrus, I think this one would be one that you'd be interested in. Okay, so like I said, I like that more now than I did initially. I think, let's give this another smell. Like when I smell this, I get the visual of like getting a big hug from your grandmother, you know what I mean? Like there's something very kind of comforting about it, but I don't know if it's something I personally would wanna wear. I feel like this one is not smelling like much anymore. Yeah, this beach rose, I think is just such like a powerhouse that's kind of like killing my nose. <laughs> I guess it's storming again. Um, I just grabbed some coffee beans and reset everything okay yeah so all these are I think are lightening up a little bit this is really hard um, because I I don't know if I can rank these they're just so different okay so I think if I were to pick one for myself I might pick Ivy Leak because sometimes in the spring I really enjoy kind of a greener fragrance like the um, diptyque um, was it Lombra Don slow if I'm remembering correctly yeah, so I, I can see myself wanting to reach for that. I don't think of this as a fall scent, although when I think of Ivy League Academia, I kind of think of the fall. So Ivy League could be just like a nice, um, fresh scent. I think I would put Zest second in terms of what I would wear. Again, if I wanted kind of a lighter, sweeter citrus, I think this is something I could reach for. A lot of times in like the heat of summer, I want like a really, you know, just in your face citrus that is very fresh and, um, you know, can kind of combat that um, well, the swamp that is DC. Um, so I think that would be my second. Um, I guess for me personally, I'd probably do beach rose last, which is surprising because I do really love rose scents. Like rose is probably my favorite note, um, just by itself. Whenever I smell, I just get the, you know, image and feeling of being hugged by like a grandmotherly type figure. So I, I like it for that reason. Uh, and Midnight Ride, I do like, but I think I would like it more on my husband. It's that kind of like smoky leather type quality. So anyway, so those are my thoughts on four of these fragrances from Blue Hill. Uh, let me know if you've tried anything from this perfumer and if you do what your favorite is. So I think that's gonna be it. I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe and I will talk to you soon. Bye.